Hello, this is Craig with Karsholton Advisory. We're going through the Section 2.1 practice tasks of the Microsoft Office Specialist Excel Expert Exam. This is our third part, and let's get started. So our first task is to display the da data validation worksheet. So we last we left off, we were on the fill series worksheet. And if we want to move to the data validation worksheet, we can either click on it or we can use our shortcut of control page down in order to get to the data validation. Our first step is to select cell B2, which is right up here at the top. And we are going to create and apply a data validation rule that restricts data entry values. So our data validation is going to be under the data tab. So we're going to hit Alt A to get to our data tab. Alternatively, we can use our mouse to go from the home tab, which is where we usually are at, over to our data tab. After that, we're going to select data validation, which is in the data tools section. And here's data validation. So for this particular task, we want a rule that's going to restrict values between 0 and 1. So essentially between 0 and 100%. So in this allow section, we are going to put a decimal rather than a whole number. And we want data between a minimum amount of 0 and a maximum amount of 1. The next thing we're going to do is have an input message. So I know a lot of Excel users are familiar with data validation and, and they've gone so far as restricting the values that are going to be valid in their cells, but they've not moved past that and gone into the input message section. So this is especially if you're distributing this spreadsheet to someone who isn't going to be using it very often. It allows you to give a little bit of direction for how they can properly utilize the wonderful spreadsheet that you've made. So what we're going to do in the title section here, we're going to type in interest rates. And for an input message, we're going to put please enter a value between 0 and 1. Next, we are going to create an error alert. And so this error alert is what's going to happen if they don't follow the instructions here. So in the error alert, we're going to leave this toggle to show a stop, stop, an error alert when invalid data is entered. The instructions have asked us to use a stop style error message. The title here is going to be invalid interest rate. And our message is going to be the interest rate excuse me, interest rate value you entered is invalid. Please enter a value between 0 and 1. Now on the exam, I wouldn't spend all that time typing that in. Uh, what I would do is I would just highlight the question uh, where they the section where they tell you what to type, I would copy it and paste it and that could save you 25 or, or 30 seconds on the exam, which will be very helpful as you work to pass. So we're going to hit OK here. And now, whenever a user selects this cell, you're going to see this text pop up now. Uh, so it's going to inform them what this cell is for. It's going to give them some directions. So please enter a value between 0 and 1. Let's try this out. I'm going to put uh, five. And uh, so what's happened here is I have this set to percent. So I'm going to reformat this so that it is a number. All right. So now we can enter a value. If I enter five now, I'm going to get this invalid interest rate notice. Okay. It's going to give me an option to retry. And now I'm going to try and enter a value between zero and one. So let's try point. 0, 0.5 to get back to our 5%. So this is an example of where the 
the study guide probably isn't a great user experience example. Um, if I was to provide this to a user, I would want this message to actually be in percent. So I would tell them to enter a value between zero and 100% rather than have them try and remember, well, is 0.5 50% or 5% or is it 0 0.05 or 0 0.05? It just adds a little bit of, of extra confusion that doesn't need to be there. But uh, this is how it is set up. So I won't change it here, but I would advise you when you are doing this for your own projects to keep that in mind so that this is going to be usable for the final user of your product or project. All right, so that wraps up these tasks. Let's move on to our next set. All right, so now we're going to move to cell B3. So this is in our periods row. I have B3 selected. We are again going to create and apply a data validation rule. So I'm going to hit Alt, A, V, and V again. I'm going to page up, control page up to get to my settings. And I'm going to allow a whole number, or excuse me, let's go. We'll leave that at, at decimal because it doesn't say that they have to be an in, integer. But in the data section, we are going to have a maximum here. Or actually, we'll keep it as a range. So we want a minimum value of 1 and a maximum value of 30. In our input message, we are going to call this loan period. And give them an instruction here. I found I can't type and talk at the same time. So the message is going to be, please enter a value between 1 and 30 years. For the error alert, we're going to call this invalid loan period. And for the error message, I'm going to paste this in out of the workbook. All right, so that looks pretty good. We have a decimal. Please enter a value between 1 and 30. We'll click OK. And so now, again, in this section, there's some instructional task when the user selects it. If I try and go 0 here, OK, it gives me my message here. It's invalid and to enter a value between 1 and 30. So I will retry. I'll go 12.5. And there we go, 12 and a half year, and our calculation works for us. So that wraps up this segment of the tasks. We'll move on to our final triplet here. All right, so now we're going to go into cell B4. And again, we're going to restrict to positive values. So I've selected B4. I'm going to go into data validation with my shortcuts. Instead of any value, we are going to go to a whole number. And it has to be positive than or positive value, so greater than zero. So in data here, I'm going to move this to greater than. In this case, our minimum is zero. Our input messages here, I will paste in. and our error alert as well. Okay, so now we can select this value here. Let's try and put minus 10 in there. Sure enough, that has triggered our warning. We'll retry that, get it above zero here. Let's go back to 10,000. There we go. All right, so that wraps up all the tasks for this section. 
I'm going to open up, however, my data validation window one more time just to give a little bit more insight on the options that are in here. So under our settings for allow, so any value is the default state for all of the cells in an Excel worksheet. Whole number, so this is integers, and this so by selecting whole number, you're gonna restrict users to whole number values. They won't be able to put a decimal. In the data section, you can have this between, you can have it not between, so either it has to be less than a number and greater than a different one, equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, so there's, there's lots of options here. You can get creative for it uh, with this. Um, we have decimals, which we've used already in this task, so I won't go further on them. Um, however, also in here are lists. So you can create a source of a list. And um, so in this case, it's blank. But let's say you wanted to have a list of names that you wanted people to select from. So you could have your, your list of names in this particular range. And then what would happen is when they enter that cell, there would be a drop down list for them. Um, if that's something you're interested in seeing more of, please drop me a comment and I'll be able to do a video that will go over data validation in a little bit more detail. Furthermore, you can restrict this to date formats, time formats, you can restrict the text length so that they can type in but not too much, as well as a custom format, which is going to uh, rely upon a format, or excuse me, a formula that you create. Anyways, thanks for following through section 2.1 of this study guide with me. Thanks for following. Please subscribe so you'll know when I get the next batch of videos uploaded for you to enjoy. Have a great time. Thanks for working with Kershalton Advisory.